Hi everybody, welcome to Katie Sews. Today we're going to be making a bib. Now, I made this pattern, I adjusted it from a previous pattern, and there's a review on it on my blog at katiesews.com. And I didn't think that the neck hole was big enough. It looked like it might fit a preemie baby, but it was really tiny and I wanted a larger neck hole and I also adjusted part of this part. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the adjustments I made. Um, I just did this part here and added to here and made a larger hole. So today you'll need a pattern. You can find this pattern on my website at katiesews.com and scissors, fabric scissors. You'll also need scissors for thread, a rotary blade. I like to use some fleece for the back to make it soft. This is Pull, P-U-L. It is a waterproof fabric, so it's laminated on the back. You can see it's kind of shiny. And on the front, I believe it's just a cotton or a poly cotton blend. So, we'll start out with the fleece. Now I like to make sure that I get the most out of my fabric, so I like to line it up on the edges, or if I have a piece that is kind of wonky or a different shape, I like to use that if the pattern will fit. Um, here it is, and let me adjust the camera. So I'm going to cut out the piece of the fleece. If you are a beginner, I'd recommend pinning it down, even if you're not a beginner. It makes sure that that way you have the right size and nothing moves. So I put a pin maybe up here, not to mention my pattern is taped together, so it can be nice to have some extra support with some pins. So yeah, so I just put three pins, one here, one here, and one here. Now I'm going to take my rotary blade and go around. You can also do this with fabric scissors if you don't have one of these. These are really common for quilting and I really like it because it helps me get the right shape on things that would take me a lot longer with scissors. But the only downside is if you don't press hard enough and if you don't have a good board underneath, you can cut things or not cut through all the way. So that's kind of a pain. Okay, and now I'm going to be cutting this part. And you really want to stay as close to the pattern as possible. I'm kind of exaggerating so that way you can see. Okay. Just going to fix this edge. Here is the fleece side, and I chose yellow because it reminds me of bananas, and our other fabric, the pole, has bananas on it. So now I'm going to take this part of the bib, set it to the side. Now pole can be rather expensive, so it's really important that you get the most out of it. Um, this is commonly used to make cloth diapers, swimsuit bags. Um, diaper pods, things to keep 
that are, might be wet or soiled to keep everything else clean. So it also works for bibs, which is great. It doesn't fray, which is nice and really great. So we're gonna place the pattern. Now with the pull, I do not recommend pinning. You can use bobby pins, um, tape, anything that won't tear or put holes in the fabric because as soon as you put holes, the less uh, water tight it is and that kind of defeats the point of having the pull. So I'm just gonna cut this out and I put it on the edges if you can't tell. so I don't accidentally cut it. Okay, great. So now I'm just lining up the bottom to make sure nothing's moved. So you see, I did not cut it completely on the pattern because it must have moved while I was not holding it down well enough. So I'm gonna put one hand here and take my rotary blade, cut it again. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the s smoother it is, the better, the closer to the pattern it is, the better, but you do have a seam allowance and your seam will straighten it out. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. Um, it will just make it easier to sew the closer it is to the pattern and the straighter the cut is. Okay, so I've cut up the neck hole. And this part is where we're going to put the clasp, either Velcro or a button of some sort to help it hook. The reason I chose this way is because having it on the side, it'll be easier to, to put it on a baby. So now you can see, we've cut it out. I can go back and smooth out any corners that maybe I didn't get, or fabric that I didn't take off. Okay. And I'm just moving all the scraps into my scrap pile. Now we have our pole and our fleece. I'm gonna line it up. And I cut the fleece a little bit bigger than the pole, which is okay. It just means that I'm going to work on the pole side instead of the fleece side. So that way I can make sure that my seams cover both, that I get a full seam and it's through both pieces of fabric. Now let me go get some bobby pins and I'll be right back. All right, bobby pins. Just open them up, slide it in. And I try to keep it open as possible so that way nothing's being torn. And I'm gonna put one here. And if you have a third one, I'd recommend putting one over here or over here to help keep the neck stable. So ideally you have four bobby pins. I misplaced my bobby pins. So I have kind of a crazy sewing table and the way that I work is with mess because then I'm more creative. So that's just kind of how it is. Now we're gonna move over to my machine. I'm gonna get it set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so for people who don't know me, I've been sewing for over 12 years. I got this machine, it was my first machine, and it's a FAF Hobby 1132. 
which I've loved. Um, I don't know if they make them anymore. Like I said, it's a really old machine, about 12 years old. And it's pretty easy. I'd be happy to show you how to thread it and how to do the bobbin, but I'll put that in another video um, if people are interested. So I chose a yellow polyester thread because cotton it is absorbent and if you spill something on the bib you don't want the thread to absorb it you don't want it to get crunchy etc so i chose polyester it doesn't really matter what co color you do on this the inside seam um, when you go back and you do the more decorative seam on the outside which is optional it can help lay the fabric flat we'll get to that uh, then i'd really recommend choosing the color that you want to see so we're going to take our bib and we're going to want to make sure that we plan ahead and we know which side we're going to use to flip it out. So I am going to leave the hole. You can either leave it up here so that way you can easily maneuver this part to get it through or you can leave it down here if you don't want the added seam to be seen so much. I'd rather not have the seam be seen, so I'm going to do it from the bottom. So we're going to start down here. And I have it just set to a normal stitch. Um, working with pull, you're, it's slippery, and you really want to make sure that you get the seam right the first time. This pattern has a fourth inch uh, seam allowance, so you're just going to line it up here and we're going to get started. So we're going to start with a knot, which basically is just pushing the back button to make sure this needle goes forward and then backwards. Okay. Now it's okay to go slowly to make sure that you don't mess anything up and you maintain the seam allowance. Make it even. Once you get to the bobby pin, slide the bobby pin out. Make sure that your fabric is all lined up. So the PL, the pull slipped right here, and I didn't get it perfect, which means that it will slide over that way. And I'll just have to keep that in account when I go on that side with the seam. Now, I only started working with pull a few days ago, and it's kind of tough, um, but I really like it. I've used it to make some cloth diapers, and that was pretty neat. So it's fun, it's a challenge, and I definitely recommend people learning how to do it. So here, I have not kept the seam allowance. On the pattern you'll be using, I've made sure to maintain the quarter inch seam allowance, um, but on the pattern that was my prototype, I did not have that for the little knobs here. So if you feel intimidated by spinning, um, you can always hand crank your machine. Um, and if you are like, okay, I can't maneuver the fabric like this, you can lift up the foot and spin your fabric. Okay, bobby pin. And we're gonna leave a hole, so we're gonna make a knot. Lift up the foot, trim the thread. Remember, you don't want to use fabric scissors for trimming thread. You want separate pair of scissors for that. Okay. Now let me set my machine to the side, and I'll show you how I flip it. So you just start pushing. And you can use something to maneuver the fabric. Um, I've used chopsticks before, scissors, uh, preferably something dull, not scissors, but you can definitely use them. 
you just keep pulling the fabric. This is going to be great. The fleece is nice and fluffy and fuzzy. And it's going to make a really comfortable bib. So I've managed to do this just with my hands. Um, I haven't needed to use anything to pull it out yet. So hopefully you can too. But if not, you should definitely use some scissors or something dull. So not scissors, uh, or scissors with a curved. Blade. Or a chopstick. Okay, so I got this part out. Now it's time for this part. You can also stick your hand through the hole. Push it up. Okay. So this is a small bib. This is not a large bib, um, but I still think it's great for infants. So we'll either you can either put a button clasp through here and here. You can do multiple so that way there's different sizes or you can use velcro now with velcro i would recommend putting or it's also known as hook and loop i would recommend putting the hook part on this part and the loop part here and the reason for that is because the hook part will stick to the fleece all the time and it will get bits and pieces and cause pilling and i just wouldn't recommend it and when you wash the bib, you're gonna wanna make sure that the Velcro is placed together so that way um, it doesn't get caught on other clothing or on the rest of the bib. So now you need to decide if you're going to be doing a seam around the edges. Um, like I said, you don't have to, but if you don't, you're gonna see that this part might move, you might see part of the fleece, etc. So after you've decided that, it will be easier to proceed. Now you can either hand stitch this if you don't want to see the seam, and there will be another video on how to use a hand stitch, how to hand stitch, and um, so by hand, there's several different stitches you can do. You can do one to make it invisible. Um, so if you don't want to see the seam, that's how you do it. I don't mind seeing the seam, and it's a lot faster if you're using a machine, and I prefer using a machine. I am not somebody that enjoys hand sewing. So, I just folded the fabric over so there's no loose edges, and then I lift up the foot, get my machine all ready, and here's where you need to decide where you want to see the seam. I want the seam to be all around the edge, but I want it to be right on the edge. I don't want it to allow for a big seam allowance. So I'm going to do a knot. your fabric so I am just guiding my fabric I'm not pushing it machine is old and doesn't like um, when things get thick. So 
So sometimes I have to maneuver the fabric. And since I realized some of the fleece was showing, I'm making sure that I fold the pull this way. So that way it's over the fleece and you're not going to be able to see it. wasn't paying attention. So you're gonna want to take this, cut it. I might rip this out, just the two stitches. Um, let's start over. Not go and we've finished. So we have gone all the way around. And I'm just going to trim any loose thread and put that in my discard pile okay and here's your almost finished bib so now we're going to add the hook and loop or snaps my snap pliers do not work with the current snaps I have. It only works with the metal prongs. I have mixed feelings about the metal prongs. It can tear fabric and sometimes it's really great. Sometimes I don't press it in all the way. So I am going to use hook and loop. Now, if you want to use your machine with hook and loop or Velcro, you wanna make sure that it does not have any stickiness on the back. Now you can get Velcro that has a layer, a sticky layer on the back meant to just use, and it is not meant to be sewn with. It will gunk up your machine, it can break needles, it makes the thread all sticky, it's just, it's a disaster. So don't make that mistake. And let me get my hook and loop. So you can buy hook and loop by the yard at pretty much any fabric store. I went to a local one. Some of the cheaper ways to, you, to, there are cheaper ways to sew and some of the things I'd suggest are waiting for sales on Joann's. They have great sales online. I also use Honey, which is basically a plugin to Google Chrome that puts in all the discount codes and that's what I've been using personally. Um, I do not represent Honey. I am not sponsored by Honey, but I really uh, have appreciated their service. And it's helped me get cheaper fabric, so I'm happy. So now I have to decide what, how big I'm going to do for my hook and loop. So this part, the rough part, that's the hook. And the smoother, softer part, these are the loops. So hook and loop. I'm gonna cut my hook and loop. I'm only gonna do it like this big and then I'm gonna Okay, so my phone died, I'm back. So I cut an oval out of my hook and loop. Works pretty well. So I'm going to start by sewing it the um, loop side here. Again, you always want to start and end with a knot.
thread. Some people do an X to help prevent tension wear. Um, I don't know if it's needed. So I just trim off any of the excess thread. I don't even know how this thread got here. I think some of it got picked up off of my little pile. I usually have a little thread catcher that I use. It's connected to my pin cushion, but it would get in the way because I have a very small table right now. Okay, so now we're going to put the hook side on the fleece side right here. And we want to make sure that it matches. So. We're just going to start sewing. The hook side's a little bit more challenging to sew than the loop side. So we start with a knot, and then I'd recommend going slowly, just even using your hand. Like I said, my machine really doesn't like thick layers, so I might have to do this hand crank it the whole way, but that's okay. Fabric, or not fabric, cut the thread. Okay, so now we have make sure you have all of any loose threads cut off, all the threads cut off. So there we go, and. We have 